Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome to our virtual info information session, Intern Abroad with King's Own Institute Australia. So I hope everyone is having a lovely day. I see that some of our participants are within the country. Welcome to the session. Please let us know where you are tuning us, tuning from. Right, so we'd love to hear from you guys. So, um, all right, so this event, Intern Abroad by, with KOI, is officially presented um, by Career Consultants Network, or CCN, in partnership with King's Own Institute, KOI Australia. And by the way, my name is Monette, and I'll be your moderator for today. And before I officially begin our program, just a few housekeeping reminders that this session is currently being recorded and also being streamed live on Facebook. And we'll be sharing a recording of the video um, probably next week. So also I'd like to um, remind everyone to keep your microphones on mute to avoid background noise and so that we could observe proper decorum. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box. It's open to everyone. And for the e-certificates, please stay tuned. I will be sending a link uh, towards the end of the session so that you could fill it out and be part of the list for the request. All right, we've prepared so much for everyone today and uh, we'll be running this for about 60 minutes. And I'm super excited now to introduce our guest speakers, starting with Jenny Jung. Jenny is the marketing officer and um, from KOI, joining us from Sydney, and she's overseeing European countries, Mongolia, Japan, Korea, Latin America, and of course, the Philippines, where I am currently situated in. And after Jenny, we are going to be joined by Sean O'Hanlon, and he is the manager for student experience. Sean will be sharing a lot about the internship program, the opportunities, and some tips that you will really need to know. Um, regardless if you're, you know, I guess staying in um, the Philippines or outside the country. I think these are still very valuable. And last but not the least, we will make sure that you're able to engage with a Filipino student. Um, our guest student, Mary Ann Della Roca, we're going to chat with her later and learn from her experience. So I would like to now stop sharing my screen because I am now ready to uh, hand over this um, presentation to our very first speaker, Ms. Jenny Jung. Hi, Jenny, over to you. Hello, how are you? Good to see you guys, everyone today. So may I start my presentation now, Monette? Sure, Jenny. Yes, okay. you can share. Okay, all righty. So let me share my screen, okay. Okay, hi everyone, good to see you today. Thank you for attending KY's uh, information session with the CCN today. My name is Jenny Zhang and I'm a marketing officer in KY. As a joking, my colleagues are calling me as a, like a mother of a Filipino students because I'm looking after all the Filipino students and then support for them everything in KY. Um, today, I have given a very short time for our, about around 15 minutes to share all the information about KOI. So I need your high attention to not miss out all the benefits when you choose KOI. I was also the international student in Australia around 10 to 15 years ago, and I totally understand what would be your most concerns when you consider and then choose higher education provider. And I know it could be all about the tuition fees and the quality of the education services and your future career option or PR, permanent resident visa after your graduation. And today I can promise you guys, KY will satisfy with all these three important matters if you choose KY. Please keep in mind three big benefits when you choose KY in this time. Firstly, KY offering the most affordable tuition fees among any universities, any institutes in Sydney. Secondly, we are offering the most exclusive scholarships only for the Filipino students which is valued up to $6,000 for entire your studies in KY. 
Lastly, KY is offering high quality of the education services with the high quality of the lectures and tutors. So let me move forward to the next step. Okay, KY strengths. Among many KY strengths, I want to emphasize in our quality of the lectures and tutors because they are all from the top big five universities in Australia. Our 50% or 60% students are all transferred by the other universities. You know why? They are all recommended by our KOI's current students, like they are all friends, and then they are recommending KOI. Because they choose big universities, and then, uh, you know, their one class is, is around over 100 students. And then one of my students also transferred by the other universities. That's why I was asking, why did you choose KY? Okay, why did you transfer from the big universities? And then he was saying, I was in around over 100 class, like 100 students classes. And then over one year, I try to contact my lecturers and then tutors, but I never get back from them. I need their feedbacks. I need their support, but I couldn't get back any from of my lecturers and then tutors. And then I heard KY is offering very small sized classes, like a maximum 30 students in one classes. And then my friends are all saying, like a KOI's lectures and then tutors are very supportive for any single students. They never let them fail in their subject. They are giving many opportunity to attend another test, another assignment. They are giving as many as uh, opportunity so that they lead to students to not fail in their subject. This is the big attractive points for you guys. Okay, and then the KY's courses are all accredited by industry recognized and globally accepted. Many of you guys will be interested in the accounting courses. KY is offering Bachelor of Accounting and then Master of Professional Accounting. And then all these our accounting courses is satisfied the CA, CPA and IPA in Australia. That means when you graduate our accounting courses, you can successfully accredited by CPA without any further studies in subject. When you go to CPA website, you may find out KOIs and then all the KOIs subject is accredited by CPA. So you can get the skill assist, skill assist by CPA as soon as you graduate our Bachelor of Accounting or Master of Professional Accounting courses. Another our key strength is about internship program. You guys may know work experience will be the most important part in Australia before you are graduate, especially. So KY is a, a, like a providing internship scholarship program. Why we call internship as a, like a scholarship? because KY has to pay the internship training package with the outsourcing companies. And then uh, about this internship program, our um, like a student experienced manager, Sean, will um, provide more detailed information about the internship. Okay. Let's move on to our KY campuses. We are, uh, located in all Sydney CBD. So you don't need to uh, like a travel far, far, far away from your house. Most of the international students will be living near Sydney city. So when you see these first two buildings, this is all about the business and then accounting students. And this third building is all about the IT students. So this building is uh, recently we uh, published and then um, it's uh, very modern and the new facilities suit to IT students. Let's move on to our courses quickly. 
As I said to you, we are offering Bachelor of Business Accounting courses, which is a three years course, and then Master of Professional Accounting course, which is a two year courses. And then we have a Bachelor of Business specialized in management and finance. And then IT courses, which is Bachelor of IT, Master of IT courses. Recently, I can see many of the Filipino students are interested in IT because they know uh, IT will be the best option for their future peer. Okay. And then we hold uh, our MIT course has uh, two specializations. So if you choose a more elective subject when you study Master of IT, um, like uh, data analytics, then you may get this certificate with the specialized in data analytics. Some of you want to become a positions in cybersecurity because that is the most popular uh, specializations in Australia one or back home uh, your countries or in any like a word. So uh, if you choose more electives in regards to cybersecurity specialized specialization, then you may get master of IT specialized in cybersecurity. And lastly, we have a TSO courses. TSO courses is uh, uh, to become an English teacher in Australia. It's kind of like a license in Australia. So even Australian people, without this master of TSO qualification, they can become an English teacher in Australia, especially in the kind of like a language school for the international students. So if you are considering to become an English teacher in Australia, then you may choose this master of TSO courses, which is only one year course, very quick courses. Okay, the most important part, tuition fees and scholarship for Filipino students. We have uh, two big scholarships in accounting courses and IT courses. Um, I want you to go and then search by yourself to visit all the university's website. Then you may not be able to find out any <laughs> universities providing less than our tuition fees. So our Bachelor of Accounting, we providing uh, $1,000 per trimester deduction in your total tuition fees. So Bachelor of Accounting is only $5,750, which is less than $6,000. If you go to our other universities, it may charge it around this over seven to $8,000. So mostly, 30% or 40% less than the others. And the Bachelor of IT is uh, only $6,250. And then when you calculate the um, annual fee, it's gonna be only $12,500. This is showing all the, our courses and the fees. And then uh, you may find that uh, with very small fees, you can start up with your bachelor degree and master degree. And then you guys may be interested in what's the trimester system? Because uh, some university, they are calling like a semester, like a two times a uh, year, uh, their uh, study is starting. But uh, in our KY, we are providing trimester system. So students can start their studies like a March intake or July intake or November intake. Our very good point. Our attractive point is that if students study March and July, like a two trimester consequently, then on November in tech, on third trimester, they can work as a full time because they can apply the whole trimester break. So without any limited hours, they can work as a full time for about around four month time. So uh, this is very attractive to the students because most of the students, they need to like work during their studies to get the, um, their tuition fees. Okay, so our upcoming intake is November 2021 intake. And then uh, you may be hesitating to apply November intake. It could be too late because of the visa processing. 
but we have so many uh, Filipino students who is already applied or applying now uh, for their visa processing because uh, I believe Philippine uh, like uh, immigration processing for the visa is very quick. Uh, it's, it could be really depends on the case by case, but I believe it's not too late to apply November 2021 intake because hopefully the border will be open next year. And then if you are applied November intake, and then if you are holding Australian, uh, Australian student visa now, then you may be having first priority to travel to Australia once the border open again. So if you are really not sure about the November intake, the next option is March 2022 intake. So after our session, you can contact CCN and then ask about the more admission uh, processing details from them, okay? So what could be our big support for the official Filipino student? You guys are considering if the border is still closed at the time of my enrollment intake. Let's just start it with the um, entry requirements. How can I support for your entry requirement? Uh, you guys will be known like a HSC, uh, like an undergraduate, you may be uh, able to like a submit you are completed the certificate and then academic transcript. But what about the financial supporting documents? I'm really, you know, difficult to, you know, prove my accounting details or something like that for the financial things. But don't worry about this. Um, KY's assessment level is now level two, same as Filipino. So that's why you don't need to prove about any financial supporting documents just to, uh, provide your completed certificates and academic transcripts in Philippines. Then what's gonna be for the English requirements? Many universities, they require IELTS test result. But I know many of the cities in Philippines is still locked down. And then many students uh, uh, feel difficulties to attend the IELTS test. Don't worry about this as well, because we can support in IELTS um, test result. What we can support is that we're going to provide the very short time of the Zoom interview. So if you attend our Zoom interview around 15 to 20 minutes, and then just to talk to one of our like um, lecturers in the Master of TISO, he's a very flexible and very supportive uh, lecturers for the Philippine students. And then so far, I have no one who failed in this Zoom interview for their English skills. So don't worry about it at all for your English requirements. So how much you should pay exactly if you want to study in KY for a coming November intake? Just to remember one thing, you, you, you can pay only $3,125 if you are interested in Bachelor of Accounting. So you can't find out that any universities, you can start your bachelor degree at $3,125. No, you can't find out. So you can pay only two subject tuition fees to start up your studies, bachelor or master. And then if you pay these two subject tuition fees, then you can study also only two subjects, not full four subjects because we know you may have very difficulties in the internet connection. So don't worry about the full studies, just study only one or two subjects, which is only three hours or four hours per week. And then once you completely study, successfully studies with one or two subjects in one trimester, and if the border keep closed after next uh, intake, then, you may be able to safely defer to the next one year duration. So for the whole one year, study only one or two subjects without no further charge. You can just hold the Australian student visa. And then once the border open, just to travel to Australia to continue your face-to-face -face classes. So nothing lose in your sight. 
if you apply now for the Australian student visa at only $3,125. <laughs> okay. And then uh, some of you may ask, uh, what if my visa is not granted until my enrollment date? That's okay, don't worry. We're gonna safely defer you to the next March 2022 intake. So just you can hold our COE and then just wait until your visa is approved. At that time, we're gonna let you enroll. And then once you enroll with us, our KY students ambassadors, who is uh, KY students ambassadors, they are same official Filipino students. They already studied one trimester with us. So they know everything about any academic progress, your problem with the online classes, they know everything. So in the same group in WhatsApp, they gonna support you 24 hours and seven days for every single of your difficulties or issues with the online classes. Okay, this is showing our last uh, graduation ceremony. Um, this is just before COVID situation. This was the biggest our graduation ceremony, 18th of the graduation ceremony. So we borrowed the Sydney Town Hall and then uh, most of the students, they can invite their families. You know, like uh, you can invite your families from the Philippines and then we can just provide a kind of invitation letter and then you can apply the visa with that letter. So hopefully you may be there in two to three years time. And then uh, we can just have a big graduation ceremony with you guys after successfully graduating. Bye. Okay. So far, yeah, I was uh, it's done for my um, presentation. I was very nervous with you guys, but hopefully everything is clear, uh, clear with the KY information. And then more information, you can connect to Monet from the CCN. Okay, thank you, Monet. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> Great, thank you, Jenny, for that lovely information about KOI. Um, Guys, I know that that's quite a lot of information, but don't worry, this event, this session is recorded and always feel free to reach out to CCN. We are happy to re-explain this to anybody, to anyone who's interested in exploring in more detail. All right, so moving forward, thank you so much, Jenny. I am now ready to hand over the screen to our, to the highlight of our event, which is going to um, focus on uh, the internship. And um, may I call on um, Sean? Yep. All right, let me just add the spotlight to you, Sean, so that Thank everyone you. can see you while you are um, speaking. Yeah, but um, hold on, just give me a very quick second. So I hope now you can see Sean. Yep. Over to Hi, you, everyone. Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? It's good afternoon from a, a rainy, wet Sydney. Okay, my name is Sean, as I was introduced by Monette at the beginning, I the manager of student experience, so I deal with all issues non academic, the first point of contact for all issues non academic. And when I say issues, I mean things can be issues can be good and also can issues can be you know, not so good. However, today we're here to talk about the KOI, the value added service that differentiates KOI from our competitors here in Sydney, and that's our uh, internship program. So. Moving forward, um, if we just let's acknowledge why we're here. So the reason why you're here today and we're here today is because each of you are on a journey toward achievements of your own goals. So each and every one of you, as prospective stu international students here in Australia, have a goal, and that goal is unique to you and akin to you. So you know exactly why you want to come to Australia to study. And the reason why I say value added service is value added service is what KOI adds to the student experience here in Sydney, Australia. You're smart enough to know to seek help when you can when you can rather choose the hard way. You're smart enough to know. That means that you know if you need assistance. A lot of the questions that I get asked is, or even any staff members, I suppose, is that. Where do I get help in looking for a job after my studies? 
And that's exactly what differentiates, as I mentioned before, KOI from our competitors. That's why we've got implanted an internship program in our system. Move on, Bonnet. So desired qualities, what Australian employers are looking for in their interns or their employees for that matter? I put it in green and red here, just to highlight the green are positive values. What values can you do you have as a parent, or as a sorry, not as a parent, as a student or as a person? What inherent values do you have? Intellect, there's no doubt about it. You all qualify to be international students, so that, that's covered. Performance. Now, we're not talking here about academic performance. If you perform academically high, then that means you're going to perform academically extremely well in the workplace. Engagement. How you engage with each other, how you engage with your fellow students while you're studying, and that can transfer on into the, the, the workplace. For example, doing presentations in groups, doing um, working in groups, doing presentations. That's all about engagement, but you have to link each other, link and work with each other in order to come to a common goal. The more common negative issues are the lack of local work experience. Back in, two, uh, back in probably 2016, when we launched this particular internship program, prior to that, we had programs with uh, Rabobank and other uh, companies here in Australia. But we realized uh, that moving forward in the era that we are, that companies are looking for students, international students, with local experience and we'll talk about that a bit later Poor communication skills i know from with all the students that um enter filipino students so especially it's going to say sobre todo especially that i have dealt with that their english is is, is not an issue so on that ground you're one step ahead on that particular ground Poor communication skills well how can that be interpreted exposure could be interpreted by you know maybe it's a personality thing maybe people are more introvert as opposed to extrovert, but that can be extrovert, but that can be perfected as you go along. Um, inadequate soft skills. Soft skills, what are soft skills? Soft skills are time management. Can you manage your time? Can you get up in time? Can you see so this all starts from the basis of your studies? What you do in terms of soft skills moving forward to future employment starts with when you are studying. And I can say that as an international student, well before most of you even came on this earth, I studied in France and I studied in Spain. So I do know what all these things involving soft skills are about. Time management, interpersonal skills, um, so, uh, computer skills, technical skills, all those things are super important. Uh, moving forward, next slide, please. Okay, education is one of the picture. So to gain employment, you need the three E's, education. Now you're all probably an undergraduate, if not undergraduate, moving forward, but education is, is, you know, is a big part of this experience when you're studying overseas and studying abroad. Exposure, referring back to what Jenny mentioned in her presentation, uh, she mentioned that all KOI courses are accredited by industry bodies. Now, for example, um, we have, we here at KOI link up our, we have got a career development program where we use industry partners, such as certified practicing accountants, CPA. We bring those professionals in to talk to our students, to get them engaged with the, the organization CPA. That means that you join CP, you have an, an information session, you join CPA, and then that gives you exposure to a network of people. And in terms of BIT and MIT, we have Australian Computer Society. We recently had a session uh, not so long ago, and that's um, whereby you know students of IT, the the SES, SES come to KOI. They give a uh, an information session, and students are encouraged to enjoy a, to be part of the organisation. So once they graduate, they automatically get that exposure. And experience. Well, experience comes with getting your hands on work experience. Internships, placements, work experience programs sort out the rest, solve the rest of the problem. So, what I'm saying here is that the main issue for graduates is the following If you do not gain experience before you graduate, it's going to be extremely difficult 
to get full-time employment in the discipline that you have studied. Next, Monique. Right. Attitude adjustment for success in Australia. Three steps to success. The formula, get started anywhere. Now, no matter where you're from, if you're from the Philippines, North America, South Korea, Japan, Ireland, be where it may, you should be humble enough to start anywhere. When I say anywhere, I mean anywhere that is the lowest of the low in a company. And with the idea of setting your goals high and aiming high with moving up and progressing in the company. If you're not humble enough to start anywhere, you will get nowhere. That's guaranteed. Build trust and prove your ability. How do you build trust? You build trust by doing what you're asked to do and probably going a step further. Prove liability, arrive at your job in time, do fulfill your key performance indicators, your KPIs to the best you can, and that builds trust. And then after that, all those things accomplished, you will get placed higher. Someone in the organization will identify you as a person of trust and of um, and reliability, and therefore will put you forward for future promotion. Want it? Next one. Now, this is a very important uh, section here. Australian businesses expectations. Now you see our, in, in the image here, we've got our man, gentleman in a suit with his head between his knees. We've got all these buzzwords flying around him saying stress, stress, stress. He doesn't look very happy. He seems as if the world problems are all on his shoulders. And that is probably related to this, the, the images, the next four images that you'll probably see. Now, uh, you'll see the title, the title, the company or the advertising company, but you will also see the graduate, tax graduate intermediate. Now, sorry, my man, if just flick back again for a second. Now, that's, a that's the job. That's what they're the job is advertised, graduate. Now, I want you to fi fix your mind on the word graduate in the following uh, next few images. Uh, below here, we see there's a blue, Monette, Monette, sorry. We see there's a blue line. In that blue line, there's one word which occurs continually over the next few images. Okay, Monette. The next. And the next. And the next. Beautiful. Now, I know you're all, we're all online, but I will facilitate, rather than ask you a question, I will facilitate the word, that, the common word that appears, the word that appears communally in every advert, and that is experience. So it's a reality. If you don't get that experience, there is no way you're going, probably high probability is that you will not get that step over the door, moving forward to kickstart your career, be it in a business accounting, finance and management are in the world of IT. Moving on money, money. And that's our last one, experience, sorry. KOI's professional internship program. The benefits of joining, of joining. Valuable professional internship placement guaranteed. KOI is in partnership with a company called Australian Internships. And going through the process of, uh, which I'll explain the criteria afterwards, that it, it is time and time again, graduates keep coming back to myself or to people at KOI and asking when they have got the scholarship for the internship, can I take it up? And the answer would be probably not because we've had more and more people entering the internship program. And because I asked them, why did you not take it up then? I didn't think I needed it then, but I need it now. But why do you need it now? Because I went for an interview and the person at the interview said, you have got no experience. I always say to students at orientation that if you're working at Woolworths, if you're working packing shelves, be where it may, if you're cleaning offices, that's great. That's a starting level. That means you're engaged. That means you're exposing yourself. That means you're earning some cash. You're practicing your English. but when you go to the real world in terms of 
professional uh, professional progression, that's when you need the the internship experience. Recommendation letter from an Australian company. So when you complete your internship, an internship is normally three months, 12 weeks, three months. And when you complete that, you will get a letter of recommendation from a company. Now here at KOI, we do not, we do not guarantee full employment from an internship. That depends on you and how you perform at your internship. What I will say is that if an opportunity does come up within a company, that instead of advertising through an advertiser such as Seek, which is expensive, it's costly to the company, they will, if you're, if you're a standout, and we have had standouts, and you will see that in a video that ends this session this afternoon, you will see the, the company will offer, probably offer you the opportunity to continue working as a full-time employment. But I repeat, we do not guarantee full-time employment on it. Gain a competitive advantage over local, over th yeah, through expert locals. So what an internship is, as international students, and I can say this for myself, having been one myself, that you're at not necessarily at a disadvantage. It's quite the opposite, because at the end of the day, people graduate with the from be it Sydney University, be it University of New South, South Wales, University of Technology, Sydney, be it KOI, you all graduate with the same degree. Now, having said that, the international student, the profile of the international student is strengthened by the fact of character. And by that, I mean, you had the guts or the ambition or the vision to leave your country of origin, to come to an overseas country like Australia and, and face all the challenges and the challenges that we are currently experiencing worldwide, get through that and move on. That's a proof of character. And that's what companies look for. People with strong character. Opportunities to receive direct offers of employment. And that's exactly what I mentioned beforehand. So if you're doing your internship and you're doing your internship well, and you're meeting all your goals, all your KPIs, the, the most probable will be that if an opportunity comes up, that you as an intern will be offered the job. Don't miss your flight. By that I mean, don't miss your opportunity. Now here is the, here at KOI, we do offer you a partial financial scholarship, a partial financial scholarship. So you contribute, but we pay, you contribute a third, but KOI pays two thirds of that uh, internship program. So what you need to do is, you need to have completed 50% of your course. To have a GPA of 3.5 and above. And I can say, and I will say, that most students who qualify for this internship have a GPA of much higher than 3.5. Now, 3.5 is out of five, uh, a maximum of five. Most of the candidates oscillate between 4.0 and 4.8. So it's pretty competitive, very highly competitive and have competitive, competitive, competent level of English. Now, I haven't known any student from the Philippines who has never had a very competent level of English. So here we go. We have your template here. We have your transcript here. So test of our transcript. So what I'm saying here is what we try to encourage students at KOI is to, before you graduate, before you graduate, if you're eligible for a, an internship and you meet that 3.5 and above, start your internship before you graduate. Start your internship before you graduate. So when you graduate, you already have that three months experience or when you graduate, you have the three months experience which you gained before graduating. And then you have your transcript and your testimony to hang on the wall and your uh, transcript to show to your prospective employer, future employer. So that's what differentiates. And to gain that 3.5 and above, you should be looking for credit, aiming for credits, distinctions, and high distinctions. Next. This is a, a link to our website where you can see the testimonials from people who have done their uh, internship in the past, their experience. 
Now, I always like to quote this one, keep going. Good is the enemy of great. What I mean by that is, I'm sure you understand it too, is that everybody can be good, but not a lot of people are can be great. So what I recommend to you is aim for the highest, aim to be great. Because if you're good, you're like everybody else. But if you're great, you stand aside. Thank you everyone for being here today. And I hope I've been served some use of um, sharing my internship experience with you. Thank you very much, Sean. What a lovely presentation. And guys, to, to the 52 participants today, let me just tell you that you just ticked one of the three E's because today is your exposure. So uh -huh. I would call this your exposure already. All right, so thank you very much, Sean. Pleasure. We are now, <laughs> yes, maybe we'll be going back to you, Sean, if there are any other questions regarding internship, but we are now moving to the last part and the exciting part of our session. Let me just highlight or spotlight our guest student speaker. Hi. Um, Marianne, so Sean, it's good to have an idea that KOI really is very organized and prepared to ensure the work readiness of your students there in Australia. And with all that information coming from Jenny about KOI, the programs that are available, um, how wonderful the campus is, the, the opportunities, the scholarships, wow. And I can't, we don't want to let this day go by without um, um, an experience or a testimonial an engagement from our lovely guest, Mary Ann. So, hi, Mary Ann. Hello, Miss Mo, and hello, everyone. It's nice uh, virtually meeting you all. Thank you, Koi, especially Sean, and thank you, Cece, and especially Miss Myra for uh, inviting me to share my learnings and experiences as an international student here in Australia. Well, it is our pleasure to have you here, Marianne, and I'm sure everyone is excited to learn from you. But first, please, could you give us a little bit of an idea about yourself? Uh, my name is Mary Ann Garbin de la Roca. I'm 24 and I'm a proud Batangenya. And I went to Australia in August 2017 to continue my studies and pursue Bachelor of Business in Accounting. And uh, I was able to finish it last July, 2019. And uh, right now I'm working full-time in a finance and mortgage broking company. Okay, wow, so 2019, that's now four years. It has mm -hmm. been four years, amazing. Was it your first time to travel, Marianne? Yeah, yeah, it was my oh. first flight and it's international, like right away. Amazing, but what was your... Um, first impression when you saw or when you arrived at Australia? So um, my first impression when I arrived in Australia is that um, it's a very safe and peaceful place to live, to study, and to work. The streets and surroundings are very clean. And I immediately noticed that um, it's really a multicultural country and the people are so friendly. And lastly, the advanced transportation system would allow you to explore a city or go anywhere you like conveniently. Nice. And uh, you did mention earlier the program that you took was um, Bachelor of Business in Accounting at KOI. Um, could you share a little bit more about your academic experience, uh, just to give an idea to everyone who's listening today? So um, there are three semesters for one school year and the maximum subjects a student can take per semester is four. And um, if I remember it right, I think you're allowed to take two to three term breaks during the duration of the course, but it will be subject to eligibility and approval. Well, it sounded like there were more term breaks there in Australia than in the Philippines. And I was wondering how did you spend those weeks off that you were so, Yeah, yeah. Studying? A term break means uh, you will not enroll for one term. So mm -hmm. you have those months as a break and you are allowed to work unlimited hours. And um, I was able to apply for two term breaks during my course mm -hmm. because I got some credits from my prior study in Batangas State University. So instead of taking 24 subjects, I only took 17, which saved me a lot. 
So my first term break, I used it to work full time. And then the second term break, I used it to go back to the Philippines for uh, personal matters. Oh, all right. Well, you mentioned um, recognition of credits or mm -hmm. does it mean that recognition of prior learning can be applied? Because I think we have some students who may have finished their bachelor's already here. Um, that may be case by case, and it could depend on the type of school you went to, mm -hmm. if they will have the subjects credited or not. But I remember I was told that, oh, if you went to a state university, surely you'll get credit as long as your previous grades are within their threshold for crediting. Okay, so I think that's something that we thoroughly need to discuss, mm -hmm. um, I guess, for CCN and between the candidates. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, a um, few more questions before <laughs> we reach the end of our session, Marianne. So I hope everyone is enjoying listening to her. Please do type in the chat function if you have any questions. We can throw it to her right now. <laughs> but Marianne, um, as a first international student, first time international student experience for you arriving in Australia, mm -hmm. what were the adjustments that you had um, regarding the education system because as you know it's quite different here in the Philippines. So um, well, I have uh, a lot of friends who are interested as well to come here to study and live here mm -hmm. and they always ask me oh is it difficult to be studying and working at the same time and my definite answer is no. You will not find it hard to balance your time and schedule because you will only have one to four subjects per semester and with that, you only have to go to school like one to three days per week and you have the rest of the days of the week to work or do anything you want. Me personally, I did not experience having three days class. The maximum was two. And uh, you will not also find it hard to schedule your work because uh, employers here are very flexible and considerate, especially if they know you're an international student, you're still studying and working at the same time. And um, most importantly, the learning process is not stressful. You will find it a lot, lot easier than the way we study in the Philippines. And um, the, what do you call this? Um, it's more enjoyable to learn in <laughs> Australia. <laughs> One to three days per week of study. So in your mm -hmm. case, how did you spend the other days per week? So the rest of the weekdays I work. Saturdays and Sundays are my off. So, mm, so it depends. Day. I clean. I go to groceries. I go to shops. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, I met my friends. So yeah, it depends. So there's really time for, for mm -hmm. your own leisure, mm -hmm. for yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, but um, so four years. Fast track to 2021, Mary Ann. How are you doing? Uh, I'm really doing well, Miss Mo, and um, I'm very, very grateful and blessed to have a stable job in times like this. Mm -hmm. uh, my employment is secured and it was never impacted by COVID-19 crisis. And I just finished my online classes for my professional year in accounting. Oh, okay. And as part of that program, I'm going into an internship by the end of the month. Another yeah. internship. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's really important right the emphasis yeah, is yeah. On the thing. it's really about experience okay um i guess just to end our chat today marianne because mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of time um could you just please share your top i guess your top life hacks or student hacks for everyone who's listening to you today um first and most important is you have to choose the right agent and the right education provider. Because um, there are agents who are more focused on the commissions and they would not really care about your future in Australia. And me personally, I'm fortunate that I landed on CCN's hands because they were really guiding me. They were really following me up. They were really um, getting in touch as much as they can, especially Miss Myra. And they are there any time of the day if you have any queries. And when it comes to uh, education provider, I really, really recommend Koi 101%. <laughs> because, <laughs> right. yeah, um, my the professors there are professors as well of big universities in mm -hmm. Australia. 
So imagine you're paying less or not even half of the tuition fees in big universities, but you're getting the same quality of education because the way the professor is teaching Koi is the same way they teach in big universities. So it's really a good deal for international students. Koi is really a good deal. And um, next is, if I was able to do it, you can all do it as well. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> if you can get into studying in Australia as soon as you can do it, I know uh, the situation is not the useful because it's done online, but it's as well a good stepping stone to get familiarized or to get familiar with the system of studying here. And you'll be able to meet some new friends as well. And maybe next, um, you have to be patient. You have to keep your faith and you have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that it was smooth sailing all throughout the journey, but you just have to always remember your purpose of coming here, your goals and objectives, and that uh, you are here because you are meant to be here. And it's important to stay motivated and inspired every day. And... Um, you should make friends, not only for network purposes, but because it will help you a lot mentally and emotionally because it's not going to be easy to be away from your family and friends. And lastly, academically, just do not procrastinate and just do <laughs> and submit your assessments on, on time. And yeah, you'll be fine. You'll survive. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's very realistic and relatable and doable. <laughs> it's all in the mind, right, for every student who is aspiring for success in their lives. So thank you very much for sharing your story, Mary Ann. Um, well, I do not have any other questions, but I believe we have a question from our audience, which leads us to our Q&A. So, Mary Ann, I think this one question will be for you. Um, would you say that the tuition fee can be covered by working part-time? Because you did mention about you were able to uh, work part-time. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, is there really a need to be financially able to cover the tuition fee even with a scholarship? Uh, so the tuition fee can be covered by, yes. Yes, it can be covered by wow. working part time. Okay. And also, if you want, uh, like to earn, like some more extras, you can do a second job or you can apply for, you know, a secondary employment. And uh, is there really need to be financially able to cover the tuition fees mm -hmm. even with a scholarship? Even with a scholarship. Uh no, no, I think it's not. Um. It's not a factor. You just have to like really be, what do you call that? <laughs> um, you just have to be like industrious and um, you keep working. Just work, 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 and you'll be able to like survive. Yeah. Okay. You can support, you can, you can, you know, financially support yourself right. when you're already here. Okay. You'll learn but how maybe, to Maybe, may I just to add to that, Marianne? This is in the context that you are, you know, with KOI, right? So this is the wonderful value that KOI brings to the students. It's really more cost efficient, but with good quality of education, okay? So there you have it. And I think we have one more question. Um, all right, I think I'll throw this either to Jenny or to Sean. Yes. Yes, Jenny. Is there any requirement? I'll just read it to everyone. Is there any requirement um, to the grades when you are mm. already mm. a bachelor's degree in the Philippines if you're aiming for a master's degree? Yes. So if you graduate a back home country in the Philippines for the bachelor degree, then you can apply for our master qualification, like a master of professional accounting. But uh, for the master of IT course, we require the same backgrounds, uh, IT related bachelor qualification in uh, Philippines. But the, uh, for the scholarship, it's gonna be applied for all Filipino students for all courses. Okay. Mm. All right. Yes. So I hope is, that. Uh, mm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I hope that clarifies the question. To mm -hmm. I think that was Maria or Mariah. But if you do have, uh, you know, those, we don't have a lot of time. So I just would like to actually just share this quick video to wrap up the experience of internship. 
um, because yes. this is our whole focus. And while I'm playing this, I'm also going to put the um, registration form link for the e certificate. So let me just mm -hmm. share this quick video yes, to everyone. Yes, yes. Um, all right. Look, it's playing. I'm Livia Margarita from Jakarta, Indonesia. It was my hard decision leaving my country for pursuing my dream of studying in Sydney when I was 19. I chose KOI because I found that KOI is known for its accounting major and Swiss budget for international students. I got award with scholarship internship from KOI because I achieved GPA of 4.6. I applied for internship in ALX Group, which the opportunity came when I talked with Sean. I did internship for three months in ALX Group and I got employment opportunity for the position of assistant accountant. We're very passionate about interns and having interns work at ALX Group. My interest was providing some help and support for businesses and community and small business. So the natural segue for me was to actually open up my own business and start this journey with young people coming through accounting, graduates, I learned a lot here, such as collaborating with team to work on client projects, attending workshop or networking event, and do a bit of marketing for this company. I'm happy to work with Amber and Danieli because they are really supportive, warm, and willing to help, and I'm grateful to be part of the team. We are working in the open plan office. It is spacious, clean, and good environment for work. It is beneficial for students who wants to pursue their career to gain experience from internship before finishing their study, especially for international students like me. We never know if we don't try and never give up. Here at KLI, we not only want to provide you with a quality education, but prepare you with practical skills to start your career once you graduate. KOI currently offers a partial scholarship to complete an internship via our industry partner, AITP. To be considered for this partial scholarship, you need to do the following. To have completed 50% of your course, obtained a GPA of 3.5 and above, and have a competent level of English language. There you have it. Thank you everyone for spending that few minutes to watch that special video from KOI. Now I'm actually um, going to wrap up this session and I believe we don't have, we've answered, we've managed to answer all the questions, but if you do have any questions, this is my suggestion, feel free to contact us. So feel free to um, send us your inquiries, get started at ccnau.com. We are super um, excited to work with you guys. It will start with a free orientation and we usually want to educate our applicants to, towards their um, progression and exploration so that we can ensure that everything that they're doing is actually aligned to their future goals. And um, also I would like to officially conclude by thanking our guest speakers, Jenny, Sean and Marianne, thank you very much for the time that you've spent with us all the way from Sydney, Australia, virtually. And also to our lovely um, participants, you know, you've been, you've well done. Everyone is great today. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully virtually very soon. And that's it, it would be a wrap for now. And um, I hope you were able to get the link for the e-certificates. Please, I'll be waiting a few minutes more just in case you have a few messages, but that's it. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a safe um, week ahead. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye. <laughs>